Okay, pop quiz. When it comes to men policing women's bodies, how young is too young? Well, it turns out that's a difficult question to answer, but I've picked out three stories for you this week that should at least help inform our conclusion. First up, we have an all-too-rare piece of good news. Namely, last week a new state law replaced policies in the state of Virginia that allowed 13-year-old girls, and on occasion younger, to get married, provided they were pregnant and had parental consent. So, the real news here is that for all All the days leading up until last week, the Virginia legislature was doing something other than changing that fucking policy. But whatever. We'll take it when we can get it, I guess. The new law, which raises marrying age to 18, was passed in response to the horrifying statistic that between 2004 and 2013, more than 200 children under the age of 15 were married in Virginia. And when your decade-long child marriage statistics make Muhammad jealous... You're definitely doing something wrong here. According to data from the Department of Health, 90% of the underage spouses were girls. Surprise, surprise. And in many cases, the girls married men 21 years of age or older, sometimes decades older. But the stories get creepier as we go, because our next story is about Raymond Vincent, a 46-year-old youth pastor from Florida, who apparently didn't get the memo when he raped and impregnated his 10-year-old congregant. Vincent was tracked by U.S. Marshals to Haiti, where he was promptly dragged back to the United States, hopefully behind the plane, to face charges of sexual battery on a child and lewd and lascivious conduct. Of course, if he'd been in Virginia the week before last, he apparently could have cleared himself of these charges with 50 shekels to the parents, so maybe it's best that he fled to Haiti. And while we pretend that that's not the fault of the tax-subsidized institution that made a youth pastor out of a guy who was accused of molestation or already back in 2011... We'll turn to our final story of the night, which takes policing women's bodies all the way back to before their people. After this month's crushing Supreme Court loss to people who think that the best way to stand in the way of baby murder is bureaucratic red tape, Texas Governor Greg Abbott had one more trick up his sleeve. Abbott, who always looks like he's trying to see the blackboard and won't admit he needs glasses, pushed forward legislation this week to force women to give their dead pre-babies a proper funeral. Specifically, the law would make cremation, burial, incineration, followed by burial, or steam disinfection, followed by burial, mandatory for all fetal tissue, quote, regardless of the period of gestation. Now, make no mistake, this, like every other bullshit requirement placed on clinics and women making health choices in Texas, is just another attempt to associate shame and difficulty with the medical procedure. And like all others, all it will serve to do is to make abortion more expensive and more dangerous, not less common. But I'm guessing conspiratorial fears about Planned Parenthood harvesting all the unborn Texans for barbecue jerky played into the decision as well. So anti-woman and anti-advancement of human knowledge, two birds, one stone. Well played, Governor Abbott, well played. So while I go pen a eulogy for the shit I took this afternoon... I'll toss things back over to Noah, Heath, and Eli.